Welcome to the Gits and GitHub talk. I'm Dan Masaki, and I'm going to give you guys a little background on Git, GitHub, and give a little demonstration on how to use it. So there's four parts to my talk. We'll get to them as they come. So version control. Um, so when you you know when you're dealing with some some kind of document that's changing over time. You, it's it's pretty important to have some record of the changes you've made in the past. If you know if this is a big document, um, and so even before even before um, we had computers, we had some sort of version control. Like books had different volumes, um, and when when computing began, more incremental versioning than just you know volume one, volume two. It became both possible and necessary when we were making these big, complicated systems. Um, and so, many different version control systems have been made. Um, uh, CVS is one from the 80s that was pretty popular. SVN in the early 2000s, Mercurial and Git in 2005, um, and these are pretty much all still in use today. There's there's dozens more, but. Git is obviously the one I'm talking about today. Um, so Git, it's an open source version control system created by Linus Torvalds himself, the guy who made Linux. Um, and he used lessons learned from that to sort of make, make something that would both be useful from his experience and robust. Um, it's distributed, which is uncommon amongst a lot of the older ones. Um, it supports a non-linear development history. So instead of you know version one, version two, sort of like a linear progression, you can have sort of uh, what's the word? Branching. Yeah, you can have well other ones like you do branching, but you can have many different changes that all sort of merge together into one coherent history. Um, so it allows multiple developers to work in parallel. And so I those more than that. <laughs> uh, so, a repository. I'm sure most of you have heard that word before. Um, in essence, it's a data structure which stores files and a record of changes. Um, so, Git repositories are designed pretty much like file systems. Uh, Torvalds worked a lot with file systems, so that was sort of his inspiration. Um, a Git repository is stored on a remote computer. And each developer makes a local clone of that repository. So each person has a working copy of the entire repository. Um, changes are committed to a local repository. And then once you've done that, you push your repository to the remote. So you're basically synchronizing yours with the remote. Um, now, a commit is an update to a history, or to a repository. Um, and it contains a few different things. Um, you obviously want to give some description of what you changed. Um, you can also, so you basically can give it a title and a longer description, although the long description is sort of optional. Um, and the commit, chain, or the, the commit records all of the changes that you've made with that update. Um, so there, it lists additions and deletions, which are denoted by plus and minus with Git. Um, and also, every Git has, or sorry, every commit has a unique identifier, so you can reference them later on by some really long number. Um, and every commit is is stored in the in the history, so like I said, you can you can view and revert to them at any time. Now, branches are one of the, the more overlooked but essential features of version control. It, so, so Git lets you separate your project into multiple, multiple independent branches. And the primary branch, by convention, is named master, which it does, there's nothing special about the word master, but when you make your first Git repository, if you make it on GitHub, it's automatically going to be named master. Um, so each branch, 
can be worked on separately. They can be completely different, and they won't affect each other. Um, which is pretty essential when you're managing group projects, because each of you can work on your own parts, and then you know, put it all together in the end. Um, it's also useful even when it's just one person working on a project, because you, know, you might have some working project, and you decide you want to change a lot of things, and you might end up breaking everything when you do that. So you want to, it, it gives you the freedom to sort of break things without worrying too much. And then in the end, you overwrite you know, your previous project. Um, so like I sort of hinted towards, you can merge branches together, which actually combines their histories. So it, it appears like there was really only one branch ever. Like in the in the commit history, you don't see that there were many different branches. You see it as one linear regression. Um, and pull requests are an alternative to merges, but really just it's sort of a way to request a merge, which I'm going to get into more detail later. Um, yeah. Forks are another useful concept. Um, so you can fork some existing repository and make your own copy of it. And it's not, it's not the same as just cloning it to your computer. You're actually making a separate repository. So, so in, that, in that sense, it lets you take some existing project and make it your own and do whatever you want with it. Um, so one use is, say you have a group project, and you don't trust your group to not mess things up, you can keep your own personal backup. Um, you can take some open source project and just completely diverge from its original purpose while still taking all of their code. Um, you can make changes to the repository that you, know, you want to contribute to it and then request for them to be merged into the main. So this is actually um, this is actually how a lot of open source projects operate. They, you make a fork, you make your changes, and then you request that they merge it with, with the original repository. Um, and they sort of work like branches, but it's really like a branch of the entire project, not, not just one. It's, it's like an, another layer above branches, basically. Um, yeah. So GitHub which isn't the same as Git, which a lot of people sort of blur the two together. Um, GitHub is a proprietary hosting service for Git repositories and adds some extra perks. Um, it was created back in 2008 by these three people. Um, it was written in Ruby, and it provides unlimited free, well, within reason, unlimited free hosting for public repositories. Or if you want private repositories, you have to pay for it. But anything you do that's open to the public is free to free to put there. Um, so they actually add more features to the normal Git repositories. Um, they like they track statistics on it. They'll render files that you write in the Markdown markup language, which is a very very simple language that everybody should learn. Um, it allows users to pretty much comment on anything. Like you can comment on an individual line of code in a commit. You can comment on the entire commit. You can comment on a pull request. Anything. Um, you can even it even provides a wiki for every repository, which most people don't use. Um, it has an issue tracker, which again is full of you can comment on everything, and it's one of the. One of the bonuses with that is you can set milestones, which are basically you group together a bunch of you know a bunch of bug fixes or whatever, and you can set a deadline on it. So if you're managing a group project and you want to say, okay, here's these bugs, we need to fix them by Friday, you can do that in an organized way. And it'll even show you a progress bar on how many have been closed. Um, you can also much like you can make a user account, you can make an organization account, um, which, again, you can make public repositories, private ones. Um, and 
different members join the organization with varying <coughs> permissions. So you know you could all have full access to everything, or maybe maybe you have some teams and you want to have one team only work on this repository and another team only work on another, and you don't want them to be able to mess with each other's work. Organizations let you do that. Um, yeah. And yeah, there's an owner to every, every organization. Um, so GitHub Pages is another useful feature. Um, it's a free static web, website hosting service that GitHub provides. Um, so every user, organization, and repository is given a website, or can make one. So essentially, you can make unlimited websites on here. Um, so for your user account, it'll just be your username.github.io. For a specific repository, it would be that slash the name of the repository. Um, so it's it's useful if you want to keep documentation for a repository or like an overview of your organization. Um, all right, so now I'm going to begin a little walkthrough. Does anybody have any quick questions before that? Or yeah. If I fork something, I'll not pull any updates from the main branch, though, right? You have to do that um, explicitly. But you can still do that, but it's not going to automatically update it. Anything else? All right. So, everybody that has a computer, which I see is, is it everybody? Um, <laughs> You'll have to catch up. Um, so first, I'm actually. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to first initialize a repository. I made a little screen. I made a little screenshots of everything for me to follow along. So I don't from the script. Um, so if you navigate to GitHub.com, you'll notice in the top right corner there's a few buttons. One of them being a plus sign. If you click on that, it gives you the option to make a new repository or an organization. But we're just going to learn about repositories today. Now, this gives you the option to name your repository. You can even change the owner. So if you have, if you're part of an organization, it can be owned by the organization. You can give it a description. You can initialize it with a readme file, which actually we're going to do. Um, you can add a git ignore file, which basically lists every every file name that you want to just ignore. So it actually provides defaults for for a lot of different languages. So like say you're making you know a C project and you don't want to upload the compiled source code. So when you compile it and it has you know the .so extension or .o extension, you don't want that to go on your repository. Well, you could you know, manually delete all of them, or you can just make git ignore, and you don't have to worry about it. Your local, your local copy can just be full of garbage, and it won't actually get uploaded. But we're not going to do that for this. Um, it also provides a bunch of open source licenses that you can just attach to it. Um, so like there's the GPL, MIT license, a few more. We're not going to worry about that today. So I'm just going to give it a name, get demonstration, and description. Um, write a nice description here. And create the repository. So now I have a nice new repository. I'm just going to maximize that. Um, so GitHub will display, you know, all the files in your repository, and you can browse through them. Um, on the side here, it has a lot of the extra features, like the issue tracker, pull requests, the wiki, pulses for, pulse and graphs are different statistics, and settings where you can, you know, transfer ownership or delete it or do a bunch of other things. Um, but the important thing right now is right here, the clone URL. So we're going to copy that onto our clipboard. By clicking yes. Uh, yeah. All right. 
So I want you to open your terminal. And if you're running on Windows, I don't know, Mark, no. Is that the network? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if you're on Windows, open the PowerShell. You should actually have a um, little icon if you download it that says Git Shell. Oh, that's that one. Yeah, yeah. You're going to want the Git Shell, actually. Yeah. Um, okay, I'll give everyone a second to. So. What, what are you running? What is your operating system? Linux. So if you're on Mac or Linux, everything should be good. If you're on Windows, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> um, so, so I've copied the URL to my clipboard, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to run git clone and paste. And just so you know, in, in the little slides on the side, um, anything with a dollar sign in front is what I want you to type in. Everything else is output from it. So, okay, so what's the difference between cloning and forking? Let me get to that oh. towards the end. Um, so I just cloned the repository. Yeah. If you're doing this on Moxie, for example, um, would you suggest setting up a separate directory for the repository, or should they just do it in, in, in the home? You can just do it in the home, because it's going to make it, it, it clones it into a new folder named after the repository. <coughs> so right now, if I, if I list. So I download it as git demonstration. So I can see that those files are in there. Um, so I'm going to navigate into that directory. And if you want, you can use your file explorer if you're not comfortable with the terminal. Um, so. Does everybody, does everybody have it cloned yet? Or are people still working on that? Still, still working on that? Or you don't have your computer? <laughs> if anyone's still working on that, raise your hand. I had to make an adult first. Oh, uh, come on. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to edit. I'm going to create a new file in this repository. So open your editor of choice, which should be Emacs. <laughs> um, and I'm going to make a file which I'm going to call test. And I'm just going to write something in that file. What was that? It's a long screen. No, it's not. I just made it really small so it fits. Um, so this is a test file. So I just saved. Save this file in here. So if I list the directory again, there's now this test file in there. Um, so I've made a change to to my directory, but I haven't changed the repository yet. Nothing, as far as GitHub knows, nothing's changed. All right, so does everyone have a file created? No? I, 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 I can't seem to create the, uh, the public. I mean, you can't seem to initialize the repository. But that's all right. Just go ahead. I'll okay. figure out what's going on. OK. Um, At least I'm boxing. Oh. <laughs> you need to use us. You can use it for the Yeah, I, I tried to do this earlier, and it didn't work. Mm -hmm. but, um, I tried to do myself. Yeah. <laughs> OK. I'll um, go to load my local machine. So now that I've created a file, I want to add that to my, I want to commit that to the repository. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the test file. So git add and then the name of the file. And you could use a wildcard if you don't want to type each individual file. But just to be explicit, I'll. Can you, can you add a whole directory now? Yeah, if you want to, if you want to add the whole directory, you can just do dot to represent the current directory. Um, you can also do minus a to do all, so it'll just commit everything, all changes. But for now, I'm just going to do test. So now, what I've done is I've staged 
I've staged a change, but I haven't actually committed it yet. So to commit it, I'm going to type git commit. And then every commit needs some message with it. You're not allowed to just commit it and not say anything at all. So you need to provide a message by typing hyphen m space and then some, some description. <laughs> it doesn't have to be descriptive, it just has to be something. Um, so you hit enter and it should say, you know, one file changed and there was an insertion because I inserted one line of text into it. Um, so now what I've done is... Then can you help me understand what the difference between, like, like why having commits versus staging? Um, well, staging is just adding a file to the commit. Right. But committing is actually committing it to the repository. So you can add multiple files? Yeah, you can, add, you can add as many files as you want. And then you commit. Yeah. Um, it says, please tell me who you are, and it says, uh, oh. couldn't get email address. Yeah, the first time you use git, actually, you need to tell just come up with an email. Okay. Um, is anyone else having that problem right now? I just used my best way to email. Yeah. It wasn't. Bad. Mine's been coming Really? Yeah. Is your internet connection working? Uh, I think so. Mm. Everything else is working. I've got three know. bars. Is anyone else having problems? I was, but it was my internet. Okay. So <laughs> it's going up and down. So it's like two seconds. Yeah, clone shouldn't take very long. Yeah. <laughs> So it's so the staging process is only so you can add multiple files in a specific way. Yeah, and you can also unstage. Like you don't if you stage something and then you're like, oh wait, I didn't want to stage that. How am I going about that? Um, I know how to do it from Emacs. Okay. <laughs> um, hold on a second. Emacs has Git. Yeah, there's there's a plugin that's way better than using this, but I'm not to explain that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I pretty much never used the command line. Okay. Okay. For get. I think it's removed, but can you do dash dash help? Dash dash help? Would it be get add? Or I think you're trying to remove, right? I was just wondering about unstaging, basically. Like, how would you do that? Oh, I was just thinking because it's, it, you're talking about the add, right? <coughs> Undoing the add? Is that mm -hmm. like, are staging and add synonymous? Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I just moved the next one. That's okay. Um, RM. RM, I think, removes it from. There's a difference uh, between removing from the repository and removing from the commit. Um, right, we, shouldn't, we shouldn't get stuck on that. Okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, so I've added it, I've committed it, and now I'm just going to show a little status. It's status. Um, so, if you notice, it says your branch is ahead of master by one commit. So basically, I've changed the local repository, but I haven't yet changed anything on GitHub. You can you can actually make as many commits as you want, and then push them all later on. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to push it to the remote. Like this is the local repository, I'm going to push it to the remote repository. So you're going to type git push and then you have to give it the name of the remote which by default is origin. It's just sort of like a an alias for the place that you got it from. As in like where it originated? Yeah, where it originated. Yeah. <laughs> and then you have to tell it which branch to push it to which right now is just master. So git push the, the name of the remote and then the name of the repository. And then if you don't have it set up right, it's going to ask you for your username and password. If you use SSH, it, it won't actually ask you that every time. So now if I go, if I go here, Refresh. Now I've added the test file. 
So I've updated the remote. Um, yeah, and if I type hit status, the branch is up to date. So they're both in sync. Now, I'm going to show you a few features of the website. So you can look at a commit history. If you go up here where it says two commits, it'll show you each commit that you've made. So I can actually go back and look at before I made that commit. Um, so like here was the latest commit. Here was the initial one. And over here, there's a, uh, there's a unique identifier for each commit which you can copy to the clipboard. So I'm actually going to copy the initial commit by clicking that. And now I'm going to basically revert back to that older version. So git, whenever you want to switch to a different version or a different branch or whatever, you use the checkout command. So git checkout, and then paste the, the ID of it. And once I do that, um, it's going to produce a really long message. But basically what's important is head is now at that number, which is the initial commit. So if I look back in the directory, test file is gone. All I have is readme. So basically at any time you can look at any part of the history. Um, and once I want to, if I want to go back to what I had before, like to the current, I can either, you know, copy, copy the ID for it, or more simply, since it's the latest version, I'm just going to check out master. Because if you check out a specific branch, you always go to the latest copy of that branch. And now I'm back. Now I have test again. Is there a way that I can make the first commit my current master like working branch? That makes sense. Like, can I revert to a previous commit as the one that I'm going to pull? Um, there is a way to do it. I don't know the proper way to do it. <laughs> there's like, there's a proper way to do everything, and then there's the wrong way to do everything. <laughs> Most people use the wrong way. Okay. So if test already existed in the first commit, and you reverted back to it, like say it was changed in the second commit, would, it, would test, is it like just a file of this or it doesn't? Or no, it's like a whole snapshot of exactly what was there. Oh, wow. Like there's actually a different copy of every version. Okay, what if you were working on, you pulled from something and then you changed a function, but somebody else at the same time was pulling from it and... Hold, hold on to that thought yes. because that's, that's going to come up cool. in a little bit. All right. Uh, uh, Oh, so actually you don't have to hold that thought at all. <laughs> so, let me just, oops. Um, actually, no, that's, that's not there yet. So, let's say another person on your team edited a file, and you want to pull that change to yours. Um, to sort of, uh, so to simulate that, I'm going to, I'm going to edit it on the Git website, so it seems like somebody else did it. Uh, there's an edit button right here. So somebody who's not me went and changed it. So now if I run status again, Um, so, if I want to copy that that update, I'm going to pull from the remote. So you could just type git pull, 
but there's sort of an implicit origin and name of the branch. You can you can leave off the end as long as it's you know if, as long as you're pulling to the same place that you're that you got it from. Um, so now if I look in here. Oh, it's weird that it didn't even tell you what you plan to set up. Yeah, that was weird. That was weird. Um, so now you can see. I swear I'm not down. Somebody, somebody changed that file, and I've, I've downloaded those updates. Uh, yeah. So now, here's on to the question that you asked. Say another person edited the file. And before you pulled that change, you also edited the file. So I'm going to go and make another change. Oops. So, so another person went and wrote, life is good, and committed it. And at the same time, So now I'm going to go and make my own change. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm about to enter a world of pain because I have been pulled from master. So when I try to push, so get and I'm just going to add all. Oh, it's like this. Yeah. Is it all? Oh, okay, or you can couple it. Oh, capital A. Okay. So, um, the commit. So so far, I'm I'm none the wiser. Like, not, it seems like nothing nothing has gone wrong yet. But once I push. Bad things happen. <laughs> so my push was rejected. Um, and it says here that the updates were rejected because the remote contains work that I don't have locally. So because there was some change made before I made my change that I didn't know about, I have to resolve that. And it gives me this very, this very, uh, oh, there it is, this useful hint. I should pull it first. So I'm going to do that now. Pull up. <laughs> so now I've pulled, but it says there was a conflict. Um, the automatic merge failed. I have to fix the I have to fix the conflicts and then commit the result. So what Git actually just did, if I look in this file, um, it's actually. It's it's edited the file and it's put both versions in there. So um, so here's my update. I'm about to enter a world of pain, and then here's the the remote update. Life is good, and you see it's inserted these things, which I'm not actually sure, but I think if you leave them in there, it'll tell you, you know, get rid of that because <laughs> you can see there's like this. Code that you obviously didn't just type in there intentionally. Um, so it's up to me right now to resolve this just in the file. So I can just go ahead delete delete that other person's because <laughs> why would I want that? And now I just have to push like I would any other any other update. Okay, right, let's say. Well, I saw when you read the whole thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's what it is. Just you don't know this is <laughs> I'll never do. I feel like fix is relative, because I'm sure the other day isn't happening. <laughs> yeah. Well, everything's relative. Right? <laughs> so now everything's fixed. If I go if I go back on GitHub. 
Yeah. So this was my change. And now it's been committed. Um, what about that other person? They don't have a say? You just took it out. Yep. <laughs> See, that is the problem with only using one branch. That's the problem of the one branch model, basically. And a lot of older version control systems, this is how it works, pretty much. Um, but Git is Git used properly doesn't run into that problem. So we just make sure I'm following this. So you still have to be careful when plan. Yeah. Yeah, so to avoid this headache altogether, <laughs> we can just use separate branches. So if everyone works in their own branch, then only the only time that we ever have to resolve any problem is when we're merging together. So it's not like every time you want to make a change, you have to deal with this headache. So to make a new branch, I'm going to check out my branch. And by, by adding this, this minus b, when you do the checkout, it's also creating the branch at the same time. If I left that off, it just it would say it doesn't exist. Um, so actually, when I do this, right now, GitHub has no idea that this branch exists. So what I can do right away is push it to GitHub. Actually, if I go on GitHub right now, notice now it says there's two branches. And if I click on this here, I can see a listing of them. So my branch. And I can even go here to see a more detailed listing. Can you um, go back to the, the code to create the new branch? Wait, what? What was the code that you used? Oh, sorry. Um, git uh, checkout. And then minus b, and then the name of it. Okay. And I just called it my branch. Um, okay. So now what I'm going to do is make some changes. So I'm going to go ahead and just. Oops, I'm going to make a new file actually. So I've just created a new file, contains some words. <laughs> I'm going to add it. These are really interesting changes you're making. Yes, very, very interesting. I'm going to commit. I'm going to push to my branch. I really should have set up the SSH. <laughs> All right. So now, if I go look at, if I go look on Git, nothing's changed in master. And now it's telling me I've recently pushed to another branch, and it's actually asking if I want to do a pull request. Um, but I can just switch here and look at the other branch. So these two branches are now different, and you, know, you can separately edit them both without worrying in the immediate, without worrying right now about any changes. So if I want, I can just directly merge the two branches, which I'll do right now. So to merge two branches, what you do is you check out the branch you want to merge into. So I'm going to check out master. And now I'm going to merge with my branch. So git merge in the name of it. And so what's just happened is it's merged my local repository. It hasn't merged anything on the remote. So I need to push to master. 
or to origin. master, on GitHub, the, the changes have been pushed. Um, so where it said fast forwarding there and stuff, if you had made changes to a file in master that like already existed, would it have not done this like auto fast forwarding thing where you would have had to like manually merge it through before? Yeah. Yeah, if you, if there's like changes going on well, at the same time, you're going to want to have to pull from the other branch into yours first and like handle those those differences. Um, so now doing things like this is okay when you have a single person project or when you know one person has multiple branches in the same project. But when you're doing a group project you don't want to be just merging to master willy nilly. <laughs> you want to sort of ask for permission from your teammates, right? And that's what a pull request does. Uh, so some good reasons, it keeps the group informed of any changes being made. So even if they were okay to make, at least everyone's up to date, right? Um, it gives them a chance to review your changes and make any suggestions. Like you can always update, you can always change the pull request before actually merging, um, which you just do by changing your branch. Um, and another advantage of this is that it lets people completely unrelated to your group, people you may have never met, to make contributions. And so they can make some changes, make a pull request, and it's up to your team whether or not to take those changes. Um, all right, so to make a pull request, I'm going to make another branch, just like before. I'm going to make a new feature, branch name new feature. Um, I'm just going to make a new file on it called new file. <laughs> I'm going to add that file. I'm going to commit. And I'm going to push to the new feature branch. So you had it, uh, there was no new feature branch um, in Origin yet, right? Oh yeah. So actually, you can make commits to the new branch before pushing it to remote. Okay. So like Origin didn't even know about. Uh, new feature until you just did that push, right? Yeah, that's, that's a good point. So like, did everyone understand that? So like, like previously, like I made a new branch, I immediately pushed it to origin. But you don't actually have to do that stuff. You can make a new branch, make some changes in it, and then when you feel like it, push it to origin. So I guess that's actually, it's probably a better idea to do it like that, because then people aren't just seeing this new branch that has nothing different in it just pop up, and maybe you forget to actually change anything and you just pollute your your repository with useless branches. Um, so now I'm gonna. Well, I guess it already updated. Um, so now I'm actually gonna make this pull request on GitHub. So everybody, go to your GitHub repository and click on compare and pull request. Um, so here you can make a title to your pull request, make a description, which is formatted in Markdown, and here it's going to list like all the different changes that have been made. I guess those don't can't click on those yet. So description, not really <laughs> making descriptions of things that don't matter. <laughs> Yeah, don't do this in your is, teammates. Is there a way that you can submit a pull request via Git, or do you have to? Yeah, it? there is. I don't know how to do that. Okay. We have a nice giving, so. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to create the pull request. 
So now, if you click on, if you notice on the side here, I'm on this pull request page. And so anytime you click on there, you'll see all the different pull requests that are currently, currently there. Um, so there's the description. Now I can leave comments. So if Mark, do you want to make a comment last time? <laughs> <laughs> You said that this will notify all the people on the project. Um, they can all see this. They can choose whether or not to subscribe. How do you connect to, someone to the project? Through, it's through the settings page. Like you can give people different uh, rights, and also if you have an organization, you can do it individually. I don't, I don't like have the process memorized. Right, but it's, it's, it's easy up, enough to setting up the repository. Yeah, or or the. Either the repository, or if it's on an organization, you can. Yeah, I think you can do it from the organization. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but basically, um, in order for somebody to have <laughs> the rights to make changes to it, they have to have pull access, which that's just the name for it. Um, so, oh, you made a change. <laughs> <laughs> you knew. Um, so now I can. Let's see. Yeah, it actually tells me you can merge them on the command line. Um, oh, so I, I could optionally, I can comment on it. I can close it if I want. I can just reject it, or I can merge it, which is what I'm going to do. Yes, I had a new file. <laughs> So now it's been successfully merged and closed, and I can delete the branch, and the whole history has been merged, so it doesn't matter that that branch is gone. Um, let me just get in sync with my script. Okay. And if I if I go. Um, so. My local copy has no idea about that. But if I go check out master, and I pull, now I have now I have those merges in there. I have to finish up soon, actually. Um, so forks. Let's go on to forks. Um, they let you create a copy of another repository. Um, I talked about that. So let's go fork 2048. Okay. <laughs> so um, if you go to github.com slash, actually you can just search for 2048, it's probably faster. <laughs> so if you go to this URL, you'll see 2048. Really, you can just go on any repository and fork that. Um, like yours? Huh? Like yeah, yours? Could, yeah, I like mine. You can go to mine. I definitely did. Um, <laughs> so if you notice up here, there's a button, fork. Um, before, I, before I click that, just take note. Up here, it says the username slash the repository name. But when I fork it, so actually, I can choose who it goes to. Oh, wait, I already. Oh, I already forked it, but just pretend I just forked this. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's one less loading screen, but that's the only difference. <laughs> so I've made the fork, and if you notice up here, now it says it's been forked from that user. Uh, so now I have my own local copy of 2048. That's my, like, I own this copy. Um, of course, I don't want to steal credit, but as long as I don't go and change the wherever he is credit written in, probably in the readme, um, that won't be a problem. Now I can make I can clone this. I can do whatever I want with it. I could never, never interact with the original repository ever again. Or if I want to make some contribution, she actually has a file here contributing. Um, I can make a pull request. So. I'm going to do that, but not actually commit it, because I don't want to be that person. <laughs> so I'm going to add a file. Bar adds. And 
it actually shows you uh, right here. You can make a pull request with the original, the original repository. I'm going to create a pull, pull request here. And I can leave a comment, and then if I was a bad person, I would click on that right there. <laughs> and he would get an annoying pull request that he'd probably delete right away. But I'm not going to do that. Um, but if you want to actually contribute to some open source projects, that's the way to do it. Um, all right, I'm just about done. Yeah. So let me just go over a couple of useful things in GitHub. Um, the issue tracker, which I should just show you. Okay, let's look at the 2048 issue tracker. Um, you can see all the open issues right now. You can go comment on them. Go comment on this or make my own issue. Um, you can look at previously closed ones. There's milestones. You see he's, he has one here. He's, he's making a mobile version, so he has four open issues. And presumably once they're fixed, then then uh, you know it'll be ready for version 1.02. So like your team can sort of you know decide on milestones that you want to set and put issues in that, and then see this little progress bar showing how much you've actually worked towards that. Although I guess you might have a bunch of little useless issues and one really big one, and it would still tell you 80% you know, when you did all the little ones. Um, that's useful. Uh, what else? Uh, so GitHub renders Markdown, which let me just show you this readme. So like this readme was written in Markdown. Any readme is automatically formatted or automatically rendered if it's done in Markdown. And sort of the philosophy behind Markdown is that unlike you know HTML or LaTeX or any other markup language, the source code should look like what it compiles to. So if we look at the actual source code, it pretty much looks like what it compiles to. Like if you want a bullet if you want a bulleted list, you just draw the bullets. Headers are just hash marks. Um, links, like it's pretty it's pretty readable. Like there's no extra nonsense in there. Um, and that's sort of what GitHub uses as the standard language. Um, now, Markdown and GitHub flavored Markdown are a little different. So GitHub basically added a bunch of useful features into Markdown. So you can create code blocks that are highlighted in whatever language. You can reference specific commits or repositories or users doing like the Twitter thing with the at sign. Um, <laughs> you can, is there anything else? You can reference issues. Um, any markdown file in the repository, you can just click on it and see it rendered. So it doesn't just have to be the readme, it can be whatever documentation. Um, GitHub Pages also lets you have, a, like I said earlier, you can have a website for every repository. Um, you just create a branch named gh-pages in whatever repository, and that's automatically, it's automatically shown as a website. Um, by default, GitHub's, GitHub assumes that you just made a Jekyll project, which is a tool for making static websites. Um, and it's, it'll actually compile it for you if you do it in Jekyll. So I recommend learning Jekyll. But if you just want to do you know whatever other HTML files you have, just make a file called .nojekyll in the base of your repository, and it won't. It'll just assume that you just gave it HTML, and it'll render that. So um, yeah, there's some useful links. There's a tutorial on GitHub. And there's also a game on GitHub that's sort of like a, oh, what's the word? It's like a bunch of little riddles that you have to sort of navigate through the repositories to, to solve. I recommend going through that. Is it like the BIM game? 
Huh? Is it like the Vim game? Vim Adventures? I don't know what that game is actually like. Um, you ever played one of those games where you go on a website and somehow there's like, it hides like the link to the next ri the next riddle? It's like that, but in different branches and different files. To make you learn how to use Git. Yeah, yeah, makes you learn how to use Git, basically. <laughs> it took me like a half hour to do. I'm sure, like, for someone who's never used Git before, it might take an hour at least, but it's not that long. Okay, um, you have 10 minutes. <laughs> by internet. All right. Oh, crap. It's, it's 36 o'clock. All right. Yeah, just head. Yeah. That will conclude this talk.